How's it going? Welcome back to another episode of BPI Lifestyle. I'm Charles Botenston. Brian Cristiano right here. We're at his headquarters. Thank you for hosting us. Yeah, my pleasure. Uh, this is downtown Manhattan. We're in Midtown, so it was a quick trip down here. And uh, we'll get started right away on, you know, who is Brian Cristiano? What's, what's the story? about oh, you know who's that guy yeah <laughs> <laughs> um i mean i'll tell you where i'm at now and then i guess we can kind of work backwards but you know i'm the founder and ceo of bold worldwide we're a media and marketing company uh we're headquartered in new york we just opened offices in miami and we have a uh, small congratulations office. thank you way, down yeah. in new orleans that were that this we just, year right yeah both yeah. this year so we made in a, new orleans yeah wow. so we've, we've like we're in that hockey stick growth phase right yeah. now but we've got we've got big dreams and a lot of action to back it up that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I know. I was I was going through, and we were actually kind of joking around before on uh, on before Bold. Um, according to uh, LinkedIn, you have forty. You made forty thousand dollars on a skating video. So this is obviously a passion that you've had. You know, do you remember the first time you picked up a camera? Or yeah, I do. Well, the first time I picked up a camera, I wanted to be a pro skater. Really? Yeah. So it was more pro skating than. Oh yeah. yeah, I wanted to be a pro skater when I was like 14 or like 13 to 17. That was the goal was to be a who, pro who skater. Who were the Bussy, Bucky Lassick and Tony, Tony Hawk. Tony Hawk and all yeah. those guys. Yeah, well, I guess I'll disappoint everybody. I wanted to be a pro inline skater when that was cool oh, really? for like five yeah, minutes yeah, yeah. during the mid 90s. Yeah. Um, though I was, into, I was into, yep, Jacobs, yeah. all that stuff, right? Um, it was, you know, I wanted to do BMX, but that's a way harder So sport. hard, yeah. And the crashes are like insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah like life off ending. ramps. Yeah, yeah, life ending. And so like I got hooked into the rollerblading side and um, I was good. I competed. Um, you did, wow. Yeah, I was never great. I wasn't going to be like competitive in the X Games. I was like competing yeah. in like local regional uh, um, events and stuff like that. I wanted to go pro. And so I like stole, stole, I borrowed my uh, like <laughs> parents like VHS camcorder oh, yeah. at one point and yeah. we just sit it on a tripod and like watch, you know, almost like game tape and we would skate all day. We'd go back and I would like watch it like game tape. It's not like today, like you want to be a so skateboarder, easy. you go on YouTube, how do yeah. I do a kickflip? And there's 500 people teaching how to do it. Then it was like looking at a mag as a print magazine and going, how the heck do they, and then you just throw yourself down a flight of Nothing. stairs and try yeah. to repeat it. So there weren't even any pro skating videos at the time to even like, you, it was self-learning. Oh yeah, I mean there were there were skate videos, but not like how-tos. It was just yeah. like really cool, like awesome footage to music kind of exactly. stuff going on. Yeah. And so we learned the hard way. But so so that's how I got the camera involved. And then yeah. one day I just kind of I think maybe I was like 15, maybe 16 years old, and I was like, you know. I don't think I'm really going to end up being pro. As much as I really want yeah. that, like the gap between where I'm at and the guys really at the X Games are some Completely of my friends, different. totally yeah. different level. And so I also realized, I'm like, I'm around all these guys that are in the X Games, Gravity Games, doing all this stuff. Yeah. Why don't I just start filming, filming them? Yeah. And so that's where it started. That's great. Yeah. And then, so really it was based on other, your friends picked it up and then were you hooked or what was the learning curve? Like, I didn't even have a VHS camera, by the way. That well, the like, VHS one I just borrowed from my from my parents, like the you know the big the like old, shoulder, yeah, yeah. like. But Where that wasn't it was an actual tape, yeah, the by full, the way. The it full VHS, yeah. not even the tiny VHS, like <laughs> exactly. the full size VHS. That wasn't obviously high enough, high enough quality to do a video. So I worked as like a busboy in a restaurant like all summer, busting my ass to yeah. save up enough money. And I bought my first uh, high eight camera. And then I was wow. like, okay, I saved up all summer, bought this camera, and I was like, I'm gonna go start filming this. And then I just filmed for an entire year, collecting wow. footage, having no idea, I've never edited, never filmed. I just yeah. did it, and then ended up with a ton of footage and was like, How'd okay. you get it from there to editing and a computer, and then, you know, just the, to know that as a teenager, most yeah. most kids are out like throwing ball around, playing right. tag, and you're editing videos. Yeah. You know. I, well, I mean, it was the same thing. So I saved up money, bought a high eight camera, and filmed for a year. And the next summer, I'm like, well, I'm gonna do something with this. And so I did the same thing. I went back to the same restaurant, bust all summer, saved up wow. enough money to yeah. buy like some computer at the time, and I had Adobe Premiere 1.1. One. Wow. Is what yeah. I started with, and I just learned by just messing around and trying. That's amazing. That yeah, it. and you yeah. see the progression now, and you're like, yeah. oh these kids God. have it easy. Right? This is, I this know. is nothing. You could just record anywhere. Yeah, you know, they're like, oh, it's gonna, oh, 60 minutes of rendering. I'm like, 60 minutes? You take 60 days <laughs> I know. to draw it in pictures. <laughs> <laughs> does, that, does that also just, like, that competitive nature and just mm. you working your way up, just, did you have the, 
clearly that's entrepreneurial at the time. Yeah. And there's obviously a company, Triborough Productions, that was that was that, that was where I yeah where you had the, that for the skip for making skip and then you had something in between twenty four DP. Mm -hmm. So what was the progression from there? And you were at school, right? And then you ended yeah. Up so what was interesting is what really happened was that second summer when I just started editing. Um, in high school or college? It was in I was in high school, so wow. I, I was I was sixteen years old, uh, sixteen seventeen years old, and so as I started editing this video and kind of learning, I'm like, I'm gonna sell this skate video, and yeah. everyone's like, all right, relax, junior, <laughs> like chill out. Yeah. Uh, just because you picked up a camera and saved up money to buy a computer doesn't make you this you know person. And while people and family were very um, supportive of me doing it, it was also yeah. like. Yeah, yeah, but you also need hobby. to do your, it's a hobby. Yeah. It's really like a hobby. You also need to do your schoolwork. You're gonna have to worry about college. Yeah. Why are you worrying about a video? And I'm like, I'm gonna sell this thing. And so I, just, I literally cold called the distribution company. I got it from the, I looked up the name on the back of other like snowboard and skate videos. That's crazy. And was yeah. like, I cold called and I was like, I have your next big skate video. And it was like the receptionist. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, that's nice. Like, <laughs> like who, yeah, do, I who do I talk to? to? Yeah. I ended up selling it for 40 grand by the time no I was 17. Way. Yeah, that was my that's first crazy. video I ever made. And then people took you seriously. And yeah. they started taking me seriously. And so I did that and I was like, this is awesome. This is great. But I kept, came from a family of just very much like still, that's amazing, but you We're need to go to, to college. college, you need yeah, to do it all in this here. order, yeah. and then eventually, you know, go get a job at some company and all that kind of stuff and work your way up kind yeah. of a deal. And I kind of didn't buy into it because I was already like, well, I'm already kind of doing it, but I understand. And you making know, money. Yeah, yeah. I, was a, I was a kid, and so I'm like, okay, I guess that's how it works. And then uh, my senior year of high school, 17, I was about to turn 18, and my dad, who's in the military for 33 years, wow. it was... Thank you for his service. Yeah, yeah, of course. What branch? He was in the uh, Air Force. Oh, wow. He was lieutenant. So he was a smart guy and good vision. Yeah, wow. 100%. Yeah. And so, you know, he was a lieutenant colonel in the Air Force. He was retiring my senior year of high school. And while he loved what he did and he loved serving, like he had these major dreams of stuff he was gonna do like after, after retirement. Yeah. You know, I mean, he and he was very involved in the community, and he was he was planning to open up the science center, uh, uh, some really cool stuff. Yeah. And um, he didn't do any of it because you know he had to get to retirement. He yeah. literally, I'm, I, he literally died the night before his last day of work. Wow. That Friday was supposed to be his retirement party. Ended up being his funeral. Wow. And like, you were only 19. I was or... eight, uh, 17. I was just wow. about to turn 18. And then that's when it flipped, and you said. This is stupid. This is, yeah, this, this isn't is right stupid. for me. Yeah. No, it's not Why right for go me. go this whole journey stupid. and then right. can't even... What am I going to wow. do? Like, go do the stuff because people say, like, oh, you got to go to your job, work your way up, and, like, maybe kind of like it, but it's not really the thing you want to do in life yeah. to work 30 years to maybe never get the opportunity. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I'm already kind of doing what I want to do. Yeah. Like, screw you guys. You're crazy. And so... While I did go to college, um, I went and uh, went to a film program, and it was I was I was taking for the first two years, year and a half, to get an associate's, and then I auto or and then I enrolled into like the bachelor's program, and yeah. I quit the first week of the bachelor's. You were like, program. this is this it. is yeah, this and is, that I'm was in, your sophomore year. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I'm out. See, ya. knowing what you wanted to do, or you didn't know when no, you went I mean, into I, the dean's office, and you're like, I'm done. Well, it was interesting because I sat down. Uh, it was like my third class of the first week and some teacher, I think a script writing course or something was like, hey, who here has some experience, you know, doing, you know, working in the field? And yeah. a handful of us raised our hands. They asked everybody, I was the last person to go coincidentally. And, uh, and most people were like, oh yeah, I filmed a couple of weddings or I was a PA on this. And yeah. I was like, well, I've sold five skate videos. I produced like seven local commercials. <laughs> I've shot B-roll for the History Channel, ABC, blah, blah, blah. Jaws on the ground. And he literally goes, why the hell are you here? Yeah. And it like just clicked again and I'm like, that's a great, I go, do that's a great question. Learn it. Picked up my books, went down, uh, and I was like, how do I, how do I quit? And they're like, excuse me? That's and that, crazy. And that was the end of it. I don't even think I told my mom until like a week later. <laughs> like, By the way, I'm not in college anymore. <laughs> what? Yeah. You can, you can write checks anymore. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah, I think I saved some money. I'm not sure. But um, no, it was the best, the best thing I ever did. And then so I just kind of like got, I just kept doing what I was already doing. So. At that time, I really wanted to be like a cinematographer, or work on like documentaries, movies, full movies, length. all yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff. And like so, then after after college, I just went full force into that. And then next thing I know, I'm shooting stuff, and then I'm editing it, and then I'm producing and editing it, and then I'm getting clients. So I'm like doing it all. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, man, I can't do this on my own. I should hire somebody. 
I'm like, I guess I'm going to go on the business route. Yeah. Like, here we go. And that yeah. was it. That was literally it. That was, and then that started 24DP. That was 24DP, yeah. Wow. So DP, Director of Photography. That's why I named the company. 24 Frames in Film. Anyway, I you appreciate it. it. I love it. That was yeah, why yeah, I named yeah, it yeah, that. Yeah. Look at him. He's, yeah, yeah he's, he gets he's it. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's where I thought I was going. I wanted to be that on that oh, side. Oh, so you actually wanted to do full length. Yeah. Yeah. That was the, that was the like whole... The, that wow. was where I thought I was headed. Because you had that for nine years. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's such a run, too. Yeah. You know, in, in like, what was, what was the learning curve of that, oh, the industry? Because the industry yeah. is completely different than, say, totally. what we're doing right now. Totally. Well, I think it's interesting because what I, I, learned, I learned my biggest lessons with my first company ultimately ended up being pretty successful, but I learned a lot of big lessons in those nine years. And, you know, when I first left school, I moved back to New York and I'm like, this is easy. I started doing all these com local commercials, regional stuff, and it started just snowballing. Yeah. I'm like, this is a piece of cake. I'm gonna move into Manhattan, <laughs> done, like it's on lock. Move into Manhattan, the Upper East Side, get an office space, hire some employees, and yeah. then like maybe a year, of like, oh wow, like I really don't there's know how overhead. to, there's overhead, <laughs> there's expensive, employees. holy yeah, management. crap. Yeah, yeah. And, and you're only 20, 20, like four maybe. Four at the time, yeah. Yeah, something like that when it, when it kind of all went down. And so wow. like what actually happened is, is because <laughs> you know, just keep moving forward and not really understanding or at least not acknowledging what you should from a business perspective. Seeing the numbers. Yeah, and, like not yeah. paying attention to the right stuff. Yeah. And at least at the time. And then all of a sudden I'm like, shit, I can't make payroll this week. Wow. Oh crap, like reality just hit me in the face like a ton of bricks. Can't yeah. make payroll, gotta let people go. Um, gonna miss the rent for the office. I'm two months behind on personal rent. Like literally personal bank account, zero. Corporate Everything. bank account, zero. Yeah. Negative 250 between yeah. like, you know, uh, accounts payables and like credit and stuff like that. And I'm like, uh oh. Yeah. Uh -oh. Louis Louis CK has a, a funny bit about that. He's like, I don't even have zero dollars. Yeah. <laughs> he goes like, yeah. I don't even have like I owe money yeah. to get to zero. Yeah, like if I was just broke and I had no money, I would have been better off. But yeah. it was like I I'm not only have no money, I get negative. And it was like the first realization. And for me, the most money at that point in time, because like I paid for that first camera, I worked as a busboy, I paid for that first computer. It I, was all dude, literally new. just like yeah. doing what I have to do to get. Up. I think I borrowed at one point two or three thousand dollars from my mom one time, and it was like hard for her to get that to oh, me yeah. and paid her back. That's the most money I'd ever borrowed in my life, and I'm a quarter wow. million dollars in the hole. That's crazy. Like, and, and what? that was that was at the end. That was in 09 or 2010. No, that was earlier than that, actually. I think that was so closer you, you to... you went down yeah. and came out. Yeah, wow. so I, that was I'm ballparking years, but I want to say that was like 2005, 2000, yeah, around 2005, maybe? Wow. 2006 or somewhere in that time frame is when I hit rock bottom. And it was wow. like, I'm either going to totally blow this thing up, fail, and literally was like contemplating bankruptcy. Like, yeah. I didn't know anything about what that You're meant like, at the yeah. time, but like... That's not how do I get the out only of route? Yeah. yeah, I burned all this cash and all these people like angry people. Like, how do I? I don't even know how to like get, get to zero again. So, so your friends as well, like, because I, I had a similar with entrepreneurial as well. Mm -hmm. As I came from very you know linear mm -hmm. you know teacher for twenty six years, which is similar to yeah. the military service. Yeah. What was what was your ecosystem saying during that time? They they were probably seeing you like produce commercials at like a high. Yeah. And then when you're coming out, was there doubt, say, in your mind or from other people or maybe even family members? You'd see them at Thanksgiving or I didn't you know. What was, no one had any idea of the hole that I was in. Nothing. No one had wow. any clue. So for me it was like this weird thing because I knew and I would talk to family members and friends that I had but there's even still is that there's no one in my family who's an entrepreneur. So really? any of the advice I would get, like again, while they really meant well and were trying to give me the best advice that they could, they didn't really know what they're telling me to. Do. Oh, you know, oh, it is hard, you know. Yeah. So they're kind of like making me feel like it's okay to fail because it's a hard thing to do. They're yeah, not yeah, saying yeah, like, yeah. dude, get off your ass and go friggin' sell Make some, some shit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, um, so that was tough because I think I fed into that a little bit of like feeling sorry for myself, and it wasn't all them. But and it wasn't as cool either. No, you know? not you like just today. Knew, like Steve Jobs and then yeah. you know Elon Musk wasn't where he, you know no. there was no one at the time. Entrepreneurship was not glorified in the early to mid two thousands. Yeah, not to the extent that it is. There today. was no schools for it. There no. were no teachers for There's it. There was no hashtags for it. There was even <laughs> exactly. hashtags, man. Yeah. It was the Free pound symbol. IPhone. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And so you know, I 
it was interesting because like I, I obviously didn't want to let my family on to like really where I was at. Like I think my mom knew so, that I, I wasn't yeah. like I was being pinched and it was tough and it was like, oh, how's your things going? Oh, it's really tough. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm quarter million dollars in the hole because no that's idea. like p people's like five years worth of salary that <laughs> yeah. I like oh yeah. for some, you know for a lot of people in a, in a you know whatever. And I'm like oh my god. And the friends that I had, while people, you know, creatives and stuff like that, they weren't business people either. So yeah. I hadn't leveled up to the point where I was surrounded by people who were in business that I could exactly. call on and yeah. like ask. And so I was just in this last ditch effort of like, well, what do I do? Like, yeah. how, can I get out of this? What do I do? And I was starting to get really depressed because I felt like I had no one I could ask. The people that I did talk to, they didn't really, I, didn't, I wasn't really leading them onto the true dynamic. Yeah. Time. So I was like, it was all like on my shoulders. Yeah. And I'm like, well, I've already got the like yellow notice on the door of like, dude, like you better you get go. caught up yeah. on your rent or yeah. you're gonna get evicted. Um, and so what ended up happening is I was like, well, I put an ad out on Craigslist, like I gotta rent my apartment out in the Upper East Side. Yeah. And this guy shows up, this French dude who just uh, be, who's gonna become the head pastry chef for the Waldorf Astoria. Yeah. Real cool <laughs> dude. He didn't care. You know, European. Like what? You know. And I'm like, all right, cool. And he's like, yeah, great, no problem. Sounds good. And I'm like, hey, are you cool with somebody sleeping on the couch? Like third in like last minute. Like no big deal. Like, are you cool with if I leave this doormat here? But I'm like, yeah, but there's a guy sleeping on the yeah, couch. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. I don't care. And so, dude, are you that was still me. in touch with him. I'm or friends with him on Facebook. That's Every once funny. in a while, we'll ping each other. It's been yeah, a while, yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah, he did very well. Um, and so he didn't care. I literally slept on the couch. And what was interesting is, um, like, head chefs so like that, they don't cook at home because yeah. I'm taking their work home. I'm, no joke, I actually stored, like, my clothes and all my stuff, like, in the kitchen cabinets. I had nowhere to put it because I couldn't afford storage. Yeah. And so I, like, jam all my stuff. I'm, like, taking pants out of, like, the friggin', like, like oven yeah. to go get changed. And I'm sleeping on the couch. And the thing where I hit rock bottom, because I did that for about six months of just kind of, like, skating by, like, just paying Enough. rent, just staying yeah, two yeah, months yeah, behind. Yeah. Like, no employee, yeah. kind of freelance. Like, really, really bad. Ignoring every phone call, collection call I'd get. And um, I remember getting home one night. And I was just, dude, I'm wiped, I'm depressed. I'm like, I just want to go to bed. It was a terrible day. I walk in and he's watching a TV sitting on the couch. He's like, oh dude, this is a cool program. And he sat there and watched TV for like two and a half hours. I'm just yeah. sitting there on the couch, like just thinking to myself, I'm like, I want to go to bed. And there's dude did, sitting yeah. on the couch. I can't even go, I can't even go to bed in my own apartment. Wow. How screwed up is this? Yeah. And, and, then, and then that was. That was like that where was I felt it. like I hit rock bottom. I was like, I got to do something about this. So, wow. Yeah. And then from there you just, pieced it together on just, you always had faith though. You always said, you know what, there's gonna be obviously a new company mm -hmm. or something else in the future. I Where didn't know, honestly. At that point in time, I was like, I, I felt like I had failed myself. I felt like I had failed everyone that I was like, screw you, I'm gonna do this. Like, yeah, yeah I'll make skate videos a career. <laughs> and yeah. now I'm like, I'm gonna have to tell, I'm gonna like, what am I gonna move home, live in my mom's people basement, are gonna know. and everybody's yeah. gonna know. Cause people didn't know the position I was in at the time. Like th seriously, there's people, friends, family, that don't even know my story until recently when I started telling it. And they're like, we had no idea. On, on yeah, on like Growing Bold. Yeah. Seriously, I never told it publicly until recently. And I wow. have family and members, here. friends have known me yeah. for decades that had, had no, no idea. idea until they yeah. saw it recently. And they're like, dude, we had no idea. That's what and it's part of your story. Yeah. And I've only recently started telling it, seriously. And so um, I started with just like, dude, I picked up Tony Robbins books, Tim like everything I could read just to try to motivate myself. And there was a, there was a seminar um, that was coming up and it was 750 bucks. Tony? Tony. Yeah. It was one of those things where I'd read it and I was like, you know, yeah. I'd really like to go. And it was like five days later, he happens to be in New York the next week. Yep. And it's like 750 bucks. I got paid by my the roommate at that point in time in cash and it was like $1,100. Was that 2009? No, this is like 2006 still. Okay. 2006. Um, and so I'm like looking at this cash and just going like, if I spend this, the rent's due in two weeks. Yep. I might not have rent money and that might literally get us evicted. And he has no idea that we're two months behind either. So yeah. nobody, nobody really knows where I stand. And I'm like, well, I need to pay the rent and I end up exactly where I am this time next month or I take it and I go. And yeah. what happens? Worst case, I rip off the ban. I end up where I was going to end up anyway. Bankrupt, yeah. done. I went there and like, well, obviously I love Tony. I think I was just like in this mental state of like, I have to make something work. Yeah. Like this is this is do or die for me. I'm yep. either going to pop out on the other end of this and this is, I'm gonna make this, figure this out, or I'm not and I have to admit failure to every person I've ever like said I'm gonna do it. Yeah. And so I went and I changed so many things and I just kept reading books and kept pushing myself. 
and it took me 14 months and I went from a quarter million dollars in, in the hole, sleeping on my own couch to doing my first million dollars in sales and paying off every person I owed money to. In 14 months? In 14 months. Oh my God. So you just went overdrive. I you went overdrive. Just, there was no fear. There was only... It was only the fear, I of, fed off the fear of, of that I'm either gonna live on the couch forever or even worse, get, I won't even be able to stay on my own couch. Yeah. And that I was like, I can't let that happen. Every, yeah, which is amazing because you have, yeah. you have you have two sides. You have like the riches and everything. And mm -hmm. you said, I don't even want to go back to that. No, you know, I, I still feel and think about that. The best thing I've ever done was do was growing that, gold. Yeah. It was, it was the worst. that one. emotional. Oh my yeah. God. I can think back to that and I really, because it was such a six months. You know when you're busy and you feel like six months goes by and I'm like, oh my God, it's 2018 already? This year, yeah. yeah. When you're living on the couch like that and you're depressed and you're ignoring phone calls, you're not talking to people, six months feels like six years. It's that, And so yeah. it just like, it Coming was home, so. Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't even get a break because I didn't get to come home and even like, all right, I can shut the door and like let everything out. I'm living in a living room with, with someone else who really it's their apartment. Yeah. Who's letting me sleep on my own couch. That's screwed up. And I was like, I can't, I can't, like that's so low to me. Like what's the next step? Either I'm living in my mom's basement or I'm homeless. Yeah. I can't let either of those happen. Yeah. And the thing what I realized, the biggest takeaway that I've like completely lived my life by from that point in time is it was, I was living in, in action, meaning I was just sitting on the couch. I wasn't doing anything to take myself off of the couch. I go to the office, I would do the bare minimum to check the boxes for the clients that we did have. I'd yep. ignore the calls of people asking for their money and collections, et cetera. And I'd just push it off and push it off. I didn't figure out how to make up the two months rent. I just pay that third just month's enough. rent, just yeah. enough to not get evicted. Yeah. And I did nothing to change the situation. And in 14 months of just busting ass, working 18, 20 hours a day, nonstop, 365. Turns I took it around. A, completely turned it around in 14 months. Like, it, it, and the thing is too, I like look back and anytime I'm ever frustrated, like, man, I don't know, like this is tough or I'm not sure if I can do this. Ever doubt myself for a second, I go. You think back to I that. I think back to that yeah. and go, dude, that was way harder. Going for, with no resources, no one to lean on, going from a quarter million in the hole to a million. <laughs> dude, what, like I got no problems in comparison to that. Yeah. Yeah. So, and to sustain that, a lot of people yeah. they they get to that level, yeah. and then what was because I had that as like a similar situation where I once I hit a I just hit a barrier, I hit a ceiling mm. of success. For you, did you hit something that you just needed to break through? Whether that was like business wise or money wise or employee wise or size wise, like was there anything that you just broke through that made you sustain this? This is the new this is the new norm. Yeah, I think. I don't know if it was one thing in particular. It was just compounding. I I was finally seeing the results of like, I do All this and this in. happens, not yeah. the other way around. And so it was one of the first times I think that I like, cause freelancing is easy, getting some gigs and doing some stuff with no employees and no overhead. Not yeah. that it's easy, but in comparison to running a business, having overhead, having employees, running, managing operations, yep. it's not the same thing. And, and that's so, not even the external things of no, a family, a wife, no, no, you know, no. things like that. All the yeah. other, you know, elements. Yeah. And so for me, like what, what felt easy until I really threw myself into the business world and then realize that it's not easy. There's a lot more that I need to learn and need to know. Yep. And what happened to me is I kind of recoiled into my shell and like stopped taking action out of fear. And what happens, I think I, I, I kind of recognized in myself through those 14 months that as much as it like scared me to pick up the phone and just be like, hey, yeah, I know I owe you money. I can't pay you tomorrow. Yeah. But here's what I'm gonna do about it. And like not just bullshit, yeah. not just not do anything, not ignore it but come up with an actual plan on how I'm going to make good on every promise I, I would make, yeah. and then follow through with it and take the action necessary for it to actually happen, made me realize like, wow, it's, there's not some secret thing that you need to learn to do. While yes, there's learning process you know, as you go and as you grow, but the reality is the biggest difference between living on the couch and being broke and, and building two multi-million dollar successful companies is action yeah. and then following through with that action and yeah. on the promises. That's literally it. And the rest the of the stuff you difference. figure out along the way. Yeah, yeah. 
Because you're going to screw up. And then, like, what do you do when you do screw up, big or small? Do you just go, oh, man, I screwed up and feel bad for yourself? Or do you go, like, okay, what can I learn from this? How do I immediately stop it? And how do I turn it around yeah. as quickly as possible? And how do I turn this into an advantage for myself in the future? Yep. And then actually follow through on it? That's how you Get take the, off. Yeah. That's the momentum. And that was almost 10 years ago. So fast forwarding to now, yeah. Growing Bold, yeah. we're... 16 or 15? 16, 16 episodes. Yeah. It'll be 17 this week, I believe. And so that, where did where did that come from? You know, was that more of a, a journey or is mm. that just, this is what I do? Because mm. you have Brian and then yeah. you have Bold. Yeah. Is, it, is it synonymous or both pillars are going up? It's interesting because we've done content for a while. We had not committed. For clients. For clients, or, or but even for also both. for ourselves. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, I've got done a podcast called the sports program 200 and something episodes into that we did we did other pieces of little scattered content nothing to the extent and the transparency level of growing bold yeah and it was very interesting the beginning of 2017 and we're doing well um profitable doing very well like happy employees happy clients like everything's good and i had an opportunity to meet with some really successful people grant cardone um Jordan Zimmerman, some other really amazing folks who have built like massive hundred million billion dollar empires. Yeah. And the question kept coming up and things kept coming up of like, Because well, Grant leverages, he's massive on social. He's massive on yeah. social. Huge, millions of followers. And between him and actually Jordan Zimmerman, even, even uh, more of an influence because he has a four and a half billion dollar ad agency who he started with nothing. Wow. And so I had the ability to spend some time with him and he's like, you know, what do you want to do? I'm like, well, I, I want to do this. I want to grow. And he's like, you've got big dreams, but if you really want to do, you got to dream bigger, like way bigger. And then it was like him saying something along those lines, Grant saying something along those lines, some other people that I'd met that have been super successful basically being like, if you feel like you can do it, A, do it. B, you're big enough. Your company bold is now large enough. You've crossed that threshold of like, can you do it? You've proven the case. You've proven the model. It exists. The market's there for it. Yeah. You wouldn't get to this point in business if you couldn't continue to grow it. Now exactly. the question is, do you really want to do it? Yep. Do you believe that you can? And then if you do, then you got a dream so big it makes you really uncomfortable. Which is 100 million. Exactly. Yeah. So and so I that. was like, well, I got to, and it was just like one of those things where I'm like, wow, man, like I got to commit to this. I can't not. Yeah. And so that you was put it, it out there and now. Put the stake in the ground, man. Exactly. Because here's the thing, like, when I learned that lesson in my first business of like just holding it all into myself, not taking action, not really telling anybody where I'm at, there's nothing to hold myself no accountable. No accountability. Now yeah. the entire world, millions of people know <laughs> I'm trying to build a hundred million dollar company. I was gonna company. say, it's been am amazing growth. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from then, mm -hmm. I'm assuming next year there's gonna be bigger, bigger, yeah. and, you know. We'll, uh, We've got some stuff in the works that is, some stuff that's already signed, some stuff that's in the middle of being worked on that's gonna be so big for this company, for really? Bold, that's, I mean, just a whole new stratosphere. Like, yeah. ga like game game changer. Like, here's Mass the thing. hiring. We're yeah. yeah, we're 16 episodes in, and I, I'm not joking, zero question if we're gonna hit the 100 million, I'm already going like, well, where's our next goal? The Billy. Yeah, yeah. like, it's, our, it's like, we're not there from a like literal cash coming in the door and checks being signed yet. Yeah. Zero question in my mind if it's gonna happen. And you direct it towards growing Bold. You would say that is that is helped, oh my God, or that's that is the reason. I don't say it's the reason. It did a few things, and a couple of things I didn't expect. One is putting the story out there, telling my real story, and being this level of transparent. Yeah. So like I said, I hadn't told even family members that I slept on a couch <laughs> for a decade and a half, or yeah. 14 years, or whatever it was since that happened. And they call you up, yeah, yeah. exactly. Now I'm putting it out on the internet. Everything. So I'm being transparent. And I'm also making a big claim. And what someone, a good buddy of mine, someone I do business with, Hank Norman, I was talking to him about this. I'm like, oh, should I do it? And he's like, I'm not going to tell you. The growing bold. Yeah, about yeah. growing bold. When, we when I was talking about maybe doing this, and he's like, I'm not going to tell you to do it. That's your call. Like, if you're going to do that, you have to be the one to make that decision because that's people, you, you, you that's going to come a from lot. you. There's yeah. a lot in there, right? Yeah. And he goes, but let me tell you, if you do this and you put your real story out there and you be as transparent as you can and you show as much under the hood as you possibly can and you're authentic and you, and you tell your real story and you set that goal, 
He goes, what's going to happen is people are going to see that and it's going to resonate with them. People who have influence and power and they're going to go, they're going to see a bit of either themselves in you or yeah. the company or they're just going to go like, man, that's awesome. I want to help make that happen. Yeah. Be a part of be a, it. Be a part of that yeah. story. And that has been absolutely true. Yeah. No question. So from a storytelling perspective and creating awareness and also alignment with other people that can help make it happen, that has happened because of telling that story through Growing Bold. Mm -hmm. What I didn't expect was two things. One, by putting myself on camera so often and really like being so transparent. I mean, you want to talk about how to get self-awareness, you film yourself, talk, and then watch it. And, and then realize like, I thought I sounded like this, but <laughs> yeah. really, man, yeah. and for good, bad, or other. And yeah. so what happens and then you is can adjust. it's a full mirror yeah. in your face at all times if you're willing to let it be. And so it's made me a better speaker, better presenter, more yeah. aware of how I sound, and, you know, and how no I talk intended, to people. Definitely bolder, I'm yeah. assuming. For you sure. Know, you could walk around, if someone's following you around or just right mm -hmm. there speaking, you're probably, that's super comfortable. Of course. And you're putting everything out there. Yeah. And then, and then at that point, it's just like, and, and the other thing too, I, I think the biggest thing is just forcing myself to make that claim. And because I just personally have so much drive where I don't want to feel like I felt and I, I don't want to go to anybody and say, oh, I said I was going to do those skate videos and make a business out of it. Yeah. And I failed. I'm never going to say I'm going to do if like, cause that's what I said to Hank. I said, if I'm going to put out into the universe that I'm going to grow this company to hundred million. I go, dude, I have to do it. Yeah. He goes, I know, which is why I think you got to do it. <laughs> like, that's it. I love it. Yeah. And since then it's been just rockets up from there. It, you're all over with sponsoring, which is brilliant. Yep. Um, I guess, you know, it's obviously a, a different question. You know, one of the comments was, Obviously about someone else that's in the city that also has someone that, you know, vlogs and whatnot. Is that, and we're talking about Gary, is, yeah. is that a, what, how do you, because, you know, being in an industry that also is competitive yeah. and there are personalities out there. Of course. What's, I think there's a couple interesting things about that. Number one, I take it as a super big compliment. Anyone that watches what I do and goes and immediately thinks of Gary, that means like we're clearly, whether they might feel like there's some intention to copy, which there isn't, um, that just goes like, hey, dude, we're obviously doing it well enough for them to realize that, that we're trying to make that comparison. Yeah. Like, why would you not want to be yeah. compared to somebody who's super successful doing what you're trying to do? Why yeah. would you not? So, A, it's a compliment. People think it's a negative. I think it's a compliment, one. Two, um, Gary's a brilliant, smart businessman, entrepreneur, and marketer. So, like, of course, the things that we're doing from a content marketing perspective are gonna have some level of alignment because yeah. we're not just dumb doing the old school stuff. We're new school as well. And so there, of course, there's gonna be just genuine crossover because we think very similarly. Yeah. Um, the other thing is too, and I think people forget, people feel like the pie is only a certain size. I mean, they, Vayner, I think is a hundred million bucks or right. They're where we're trying to get to. Yeah. So let's even say Vayner gets to a billion and Bold gets to a billion. We're still like less than 5% of the entire market. Yeah. Like we could both grow to like $50 billion and still not have <laughs> each and yeah. still not even have the entire market share. Yeah. So like, so what? Yeah. Like there's more Build than enough the room. Buildings. Yeah. Yeah. There's A, there's more than enough room and B, like I respect the guy. I actually got to spend some time with him a couple of weeks ago. Yeah smart as hell and yeah. so i look up to what he's accomplished and and i think that again it's just a compliment to even be compared and while the tactics are somewhat similar um and yeah we're in a similar industry we're not exactly going after the identical things and again yeah. what does it matter the industry is so massive jordan zimmer has a four and a half billion dollar agency yeah that's like 700 bolds and plus <laughs> and it, like, who cares it's, it's um, huge yeah. right and everything's changing and so i believe in five you know five years plus down the line you're going to have the bowl or wise the vayner meters and some other really great companies that knew to take this time frame and do stuff differently and yep. you're going to see some of the older school companies maybe not be around or be well, very that's the different. question yeah so being in real estate there's disruption everywhere you have mm -hmm. the apps and everything else where do you see it say the industry in five years is everything solely going to be online in the pillar of say traditional media and everything else is just going to be so low that you're just you're just nabbing market share left and right It'll never go away, traditional. Yeah, like be bus stops and... Of course, <laughs> because here's the thing as well. If let's, like, I think it's on average, if you look at the holding companies, which are the vast majority, they own the vast majority of the ad agencies, which means it's the vast majority of media spend. It's like 80 or 82% of all of that spend from all of them is still in traditional media. 
Really? So there's so they see value in that, or they actually like they here's clearly... the truth. No, here's the truth. While there is some value in it, it's not as valuable today as it once was ten years ago. Everyone recognizes you can't. I mean, the numbers are the numbers. There's yeah. no question that what TV was val what TV was valued at ten years ago, it shouldn't be valued at today. Yet it's oh, more it's expensive today. Close. Really? Yeah. So it's wow. Prime. So so here's the deal though. If all of those agencies, even most of those agencies, shifted from 80% of their budget in traditional to 80% in digital and only 20% in traditional, you would watch the fall of mega media companies, newspaper, all of them would probably disappear. Really? And so they all have a vested interest to not completely change the game. Yeah. Because if they fall, then what are they going to sell? Yeah. And it's a lot harder to sell a really smart strategy with ongoing content on a daily basis with Facebook marketing and Instagram and so on and blah, 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 that really works scaled out yeah. internationally versus buying $100 million of TV ads. Exactly. You can do that in one phone call. Yeah. A and billboard. You know, you can yeah, you can you could blow ten million dollars in Times Square on a digital billboard right now with one phone call. Yeah, ten million dollars in Facebook and Instagram advertising and content. <laughs> you would see a spike immediately. Yeah, so that's that's it's, your. It's pie. an old business model that 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 has to rely on the old business models. Do you see a time frame on that, where it's gonna, people are gonna come over the hill? I say the next three to five years it's are gonna going be that to soon. be really yeah, scary really for the companies that genuinely are still vested in the old way of doing business. Again, I'm not saying TV is going to go away, but it's not going to look like it does today. Yeah. And that that's really going to play out in five to seven, but in three to five, I think there's going to be a really big shift in the way things are done. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So we're going to wrap it up and we'll just say, you know, obviously everyone could find you online. Yeah. It's pretty easy. <laughs> Super easy now. I know. What would you say as one of the closing questions is, where do you see yourself, say, by 2020? You know, it's short enough, but mm -hmm. it's not, you know, lifetime. Yeah. We'll have crossed the $100 million mark for really? certain. No question in my mind. Um, I also believe that... Still doing Growing Bold. Will there be a time where you say this is a little too... Hmm. That's a good vested? Question. I don't know. Like, a little too personal? I was, I was joking the other day. What happens when we hit episode, you know, 45, when, we did it. <laughs> then what? Right? Exactly. So like, I don't know. I don't know what we want to do at that point in time. Maybe do just a company. Right. But here, here's the interesting part about Growing Bold that ties all this back together. The most interesting part about Growing Bold is that it's become, we become our most interesting client. And things that I want to do, test, try with another client, which might take weeks, months of approval, never get approved, or like kind of watered down, we yeah. get to just do. Yeah. And then we get to see the true unadulterated raw numbers and information. And what's cool about that is it does two things. One, it's testing ground for us and for our clients. So it puts us always at the bleeding edge. Yep. Two, if let's say, like right now we're doing a lot of Facebook advertising, let's say in 2020 that Facebook is not performing as well and it's all on XYZ platform. Yeah. Well, it forces us to have to shift it. And what we tell our clients, I'm putting our money and time where our mouths are. Exactly. I'm not telling you to do anything yeah, different yeah, than yeah. what I'm already doing. Yeah. And so my investment is going to go where the market makes most sense. And yeah. so it's kind of like a shining light. And it also gives confidence to our clients that we're not just telling them to do something. We're doing it ourselves. Yeah. So yeah. whatever that looks like in 2020, we'll do. Yeah, we're doing That's it. That's it. Eating, eating your own... Uh... Why not? Yeah, I like Dog it. Food, right? I Is like it. So terrible. we're going to wrap it up here. Obviously, Brian's got a crazy schedule. <laughs> and I really appreciate it for hosting us and uh, having us here. And obviously, wish you the best of luck. Seeing the journey all the way through. Mm. Go to Bold CEO. Bill, at Bold CEO on everything. So you're the company and the No, we have, a, we have a business. You know, Bold Worldwide, Instagram, and Facebook, all that stuff. But yeah. like the most of the content comes, comes, comes through, through me. Yeah. Um, Subscribe and I, to the channel. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. YouTube, Facebook are like the biggest channels for us right now. Yeah. Yeah. And it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun 2018. Dude, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 2018 is gonna be nuts. That's I'm great. Yeah. Well, thanks guys again for watching and for the uh, three cameras that are in front of us right now. Uh, subscribe to the video. Obviously, follow Do Brian it. and watch the journey as he goes to one billion. I'll just throw it out <laughs> there. <laughs> All, right. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks, man. I appreciate it.